All right, so we're back with another episode. Masochist credit to Simo and Hossman for inventing it. But first, would you like to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your decks so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, so the only change that we're actually making from the last episode was we're adding the Imduct. Uh, we pulled this card. It's basically, it's like a relinquished anima, but a little slower and only for normal monsters. We're cutting the Link Spider temporarily, so we're going to save that. Um, and also, we're going to do one more thing I just remembered. Uh, we have the Land for Lankus. Land for Lankus is a Link 2 that is technically speaking slightly better than Baba Barber. They both have, they both require two monsters, but this is just slightly stronger, so we're just going to include that instead. And I think that's the only change that we're actually making from the previous episode. Uh, we didn't pull anything. Last episode was some of the worst pulls, but some of the best duels. So, I don't really care if our, our pull sucked. So, yeah, like I said, it was just really, really fun. Uh, probably the funnest episode was last episode. Let's go duel. Alright, so, we just lost a coin flip. Our hand's not looking... Too shabby, honestly. We've got Arborea, Familiar Possessed, Lightning Vortex. Not bad. Uh, he's, he's got the Kashtira Ogre. Now, I'll be honest with you, Lightning Vortex, pretty good against the Kashtira board, because I don't think they have anything really to stop it. Uh, I guess they have some protection, but that's about it. He's going to go to end phase just off of that. He's got, I don't even know how that ended up happening, uh, but he's in end phase. That's fine with me. We have Time Thief online, and we have Time Thief or a Link 3, and obviously Time Thief is infinitely better than a Link 3. Like I said, we don't have any like really, really good Link 3s, but we have Time Thief, and Time Thief just works better. So I think we just summon the Familiar Possessed. We're going to special summon the Archfiend out in a moment. He's going to activate the Kashtira card. To special summon a Kashtira monster that is banished, that's fine. So he's going to be able to summon the Ogre because he banished the Ogre. I, I can, we can obviously pop the Ogre if we want to. So we're going to special summon this. This is an inherent special summon so it won't trigger the Ogre. Uh, and then we can go into, like I said, we can go into this dude actually, but this doesn't really help us. So I think we go into the Time Thief. And yeah, from the Time Thief I think we have cool stuff that we can do. So we can go into Time Thief. We can actually... This is every single turn during either player's turn, you can special summon anyway, so it doesn't really help to destroy this. So we'll just attack over this monster here. And, oh, it's a stone. I didn't expect that, I'll be honest with you. I did not expect the stone face down. Uh, yeah, this Kashtira card, during either player's turn, you can special summon a Banished or in the Graveyard. Alright, so I, yeah, I, I, think, I still think we save the Vortex for later. And then we set two and we just pass we save the vortex for later because right now it's not the end of the world and he can reset the top of our deck but it's whatever resetting our deck is not is not really that impactful or he can banish a card from the top of our deck so now he's going to be able to summon a blue eyes card from his deck which hopefully is just a regular blue eyes and not anything too crazy like a jet jet would be annoying but regular blue eyes should be still not so bad he's going to summon solid which is shocking because nobody uses Solid and it forces me to activate Time Thief. That is crazy. I didn't expect that. Solid is basically one of the worst Blue Eyes cards there is. It, it essentially tar it targets and negates on Summon, which is really, really slow. And then it could shuffle itself back to Summon a Blue Eyes, which that effect is actually not bad. But that first effect is just kind of trash. So he's going to summon his Royal Rare Blue Eyes. We're going to get our Time Thief thrown into the great into the Banish Pile and then return. He's going to be able to activate the Ogre if he wants to in the next chain. It's just what happens. He's going to look at our stuff here. All right, so he's going to banish one card. We're going to get back our... He's going to banish... I'm going to see in a second what he banished, but he's going to banish our Dimensional Prison. Obviously a pretty good card, but we're going to lose the Dimensional Prison. It's not the end of the world. Right, we're going to activate Time Thief. Hopefully get something useful. 
and he's going to be able to activate the ogre again if he wants to at the end okay we get a monster which is the unicorn it's not bad uh, we're gonna have to sit through the ogre every single turn now what is good is we do have a few interruptions we have the ledger book so we can banish two monsters and the next turn we can just vortex whatever's on the board which that's pretty cool playing a Kashdira blue eyes deck just I mean, it's interesting to say the least. I'm gonna add a trap to his deck. Uh, I guess that's fine. Could have negated that with Forbidden Chalice, but it's whatever. So he's gonna add this one to the Big Bang. He's gonna activate the Blue Eyes Dictator. He's gonna send Blue Eyes to Special Summon itself. And I gotta tell you, I don't know what it is. I don't see the... I don't see it. I'll be honest with you, I don't see it. Um, now we're here, we can do some stuff, but I don't, again, it's, I don't think it's worth it. He can discard a Blue Eyes card to Special Summon a Blue Eyes. Yeah, I gotta say, I just don't, I don't see the connection here. He can summon back the abyss dragon which abyss dragon's pretty good because he can go into chaos mac but again if we can survive this turn we're, we're in good situation right because next turn we just lightning vortex so if, as long as we can survive right now we're good he's going to add chaos form during the end phase he's going to be able to add chaos max dragon if he doesn't already have it yeah i don't see the i don't see the connection between the Kashdira and the blue eyes i don't know what this guy was really thinking now he's gonna summon maiden i don't even know what maiden has to do with any of this most noobs just keep maiden on the board which i hope that this guy does i hope he's just he just keeps maiden on the board that would be uh that would be phenomenal he, i hope he doesn't go into spirit dragon i hope he's like oh this isn't good enough let's go to battle phase nope he's going into a rank eight it seems uh cypher which allows him to steal a monster if he activates that i could just trigger time thief and yeah that's fine so now the only monster that can attack is the galaxy eye cypher dragon so that's fine with me i'm just going to activate time thief and i don't even have to worry about having to i don't have to be i don't have to worry about blocking an attack because the only monster that can attack for the rest of the turn is that monster so yeah, except this card. So the only monster that can attack is the monster that he has. That's good enough for me. So he's going to go into Cypher X. Next, this prevents lights from getting targeted. Now you can detach two materials preventing lights from getting targeted by card effects. Just fine because I have Lightning Vortex, which is a non-targeting destruction anyway. I'm going to go to Battle Phase. He shouldn't be able to attack because he activated the effect of his other card. <laughs> so yeah, now he's going to more than likely go to end yeah go to end phase and we're gonna get our time thief back and now we can we can sort of whoa we don't want to activate that we can sort of play here nefariousness we don't want to activate nefariousness now we can clear his board which is really cool all right let's see nahata's not super usable right now uh we're gonna activate time thief to get a material why not let's get a material we got a monster which is a blue eyes i think the smarter card to activate is the, the discard is the Nahata so I'm going to discard Nahata he's going to be able to do this whole loop with the Kashdir Ogre which is again pretty fine I, I, it's not the end of the world we can activate to destroy everything Cypher X doesn't protect against destruction so we're just going to activate the Lightning Vortex and that'll clear up his board I think again the card to get rid of is probably the Nahata uh, we don't have any non-effect monsters that re really work with this card but this is a free special summon, it's more attack, and this, they're technically the same attack, but they're both weak. <laughs> so I think we're going to discard, and then we're going to destroy everything on his board. It's pretty good. Alright, um, now, he's going to activate Jet, the bane of my existence, and there's nothing that I can do about Jet here. I can't even out Jet. Jet is like the main card that we just do not have an out for Jet. Jet is like the main dude. It's just like, there's nothing I can do about Jet. No, there's nothing I can do. Jet is it. Jet is the problem. He's our main problem. So I think we just go to end phase. Like, I, I have nothing that I can really do about Jet. He is the main problem for us. He's the reason we always lose to Blue Eyes. If this card never got made, we would never lose to Blue Eyes with our Masochist deck. At least like, you know, like casual, casual anime Blue Eyes. We would never lose to casual, casual anime Blue Eyes again. Well, that's pretty good. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, we technically have the out to Jet now because we could put it on the top of his deck. And as long as he doesn't have any other plays here, he has a stone, so he can add back stuff. Yeah, he can add back, like, blue eyes to hand and stuff. So, I mean, he's got some plays for sure. And I don't want to detach this card until I need to, the alternative. Because alternative, when detached... I don't want to detach alternative, because it'll give him allow him to return it to his hand with the stones. But he doesn't have it in the... What a bricky deck, by the way. How do these people never brick? We brick with decks that aren't even that bad. And these guys never brick. Uh, I'm trying to think how to play this out. This can make things level 7 or something. You can special... Alright, he can make himself level 7. I don't think that's really that big of a deal. So that's fine. He can make himself... Yeah, he can uh, banish cards. Uh, 
Yeah, that's fine. He can make himself level 7. That's not really that big of a deal right now. Because he doesn't have any other Kashdira cards that really work. Except now he does. So. And it's Fenrir. Okay, that's fine though. Because we, we have the outs. So that's fine. We have the ledger book. When we need it. See, this is the uh, annoying part now. He's going to banish off the top. I'm going to wait to see what he does here first. I'm going to wait to see what he does. Main phase is going to add a Kashdira. I, I'm, it's just shocking to me that these people never brick. And then he added that thing to add another Kashdira if he wants to. I mean, technically we could have banished this stuff, but it wouldn't have really helped. So a special summon the tier limits Kashdira and then mill top three of the deck. Yeah, this is not looking good for us at all. All right, he's going to end of main phase. I'm cool with the end of main phase. And I think I'm going to now at the beginning of his turn, I think we get rid of two cards. So yeah, I think we just get rid of one card. I think we just get rid of the Fenrir. I mean, what's more dangerous right now, Fenrir or Jet? <laughs> They're both really good. And we both don't have an out to either of them. So Fenrir or Jet, like there's, th th those are our options. I think we activate this and we get rid of Fenrir. We'll, we'll deal with Fenrir later and we won't do anything else. And then the, the Redoer we can deal with in a different manner. So we'll, we'll get rid of the Fenrir. And now he's going to attack with Jet. And I'm just going to activate Time Thief Redoer before he can activate the effect of Jet. And I'm going to detach Infinite Impermanence. And I'm actually going to detach this too just to make sure we get it off the board so no foolishness happens. We're going to get Jet over there. And now next turn we're going to be able to do stuff. So we're going to lose that, and that's fine. I actually should just... I could have kept the... I could have kept the monster on board, but it's fine because this this uh, Arborea has blocked both attacks. So uh, I, I could have kept the Time Thief Redoer on board, but I didn't want to keep the Time Thief Redoer on the board because it's a little bit dangerous to keep Time Thief Redoer on the board just because it's... Uh, if they have some sort of removal, then we have to kind of lose to that removal. He's going to go into Shangri-La, and this card can be annoying, but right now... It's not the end of the world right now. So now he gets his monsters back, and we also get our monster back. And this is our way of outing. This is our way of outing the jet that he's got, because jet was a problem. Obviously, so is Kashdira. The Kashdira cards are a problem too. But yeah, you know, what can, what can you do, right? So now we get a card off the top. He's got a lot of stuff right now. It's kind of built up. He's gonna get a this o a unicorn back which is bad. I mean, the thing is, he's winning very heavily in card advantage. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I think we... There's just no way we win this one. As much as this sucks to say, there's no way we win this one. The Time Thief Redoer. We're going to detach. He's going to summon another Blue Eyes in the end phase. Uh, because we just got another material. It's the Blue Eyes. Uh, we... Our time thief's targeted anyway, so we're gonna lose the time thief. We have this doesn't do anything. I mean, we can negate it, but we can't get over his monster. Ray doesn't do anything. I, I think we just lose this one. He just has way too much going on right now. All right, so this is what our opponent was playing. Like, dude, how do they not brick? How do they not brick? They've got deep eyes, white dragon. They've got all of these like random hand traps that have nothing to do with each other. They've got entire Kashdira package. They've got this while simultaneously having blue eyes level eights like all of these bricks but they don't brick it's incredible all right so we just won the coin flip and our hand's looking pretty solid actually we have barrier statue and we have the paleozoic so that's already really good i think i'm just going to activate i think i'm just going to set the paleos i don't even know if i'm going to use the messenger of peace yet i think we're just going to sit on that for now he's going to maxi wonderful that's a waste of a maxi we're gonna probably just set the paleozoic and Paleozoic is usually enough to, uh, you know, s stop whatever he's going to do. And then next, just in case he's got like Lightning Storm or something, we can use Messenger of Peace later. So we're just going to save the, the, the Messenger of Peace for a later time. He's going to max C, which is, I love when people do this. He's playing Exosisters, which does have a tough time playing around the Barrier Statue, which I'm happy about. He's, he's going to add Martha, obviously, the best card in the deck. And that is 1,600 attack, so we can't even attack past the Messenger of Peace. And also, I mean, if he normal summons it, he's going to summon this, which is the Aritama. 
which is again I'm fine with me because that doesn't have enough attack to get over his monster but he's gonna add be able to add a spirit monster he's gonna be able to add this this lets him normal summon too which is kind of crazy he's gonna be able to normal summon another one but again I don't think it has enough attack right Yeah, 400 attack he can normal summon both of these but they don't do enough yet so it's, it's we're still fine right now we're still good we're still good because he can't exceed summon and they're both too weak to do anything so right now we are good and now he's going to set, and I imagine just pass on what he's got. Most of the Exo Sister stuff, like the Spawn Trap cards, don't usually do anything. Because most of the time you need the monsters on board for them to do anything. So he's going to end phase. Both of these have a mandatory effect to return back to the hand. I'm not even going to bother wasting my Paleozoic Dinomiscus. And then we've got good stuff. We have Ray, which can float. We have this dude that can sometimes float. And a few other things that are useful. And then we've got the Messenger of Peace. We've got, there can only be one. That's phenomenal. That is phenomenal. Wow, okay. So now we summon we have two really good floodgates. We summon Ray because I think she's just a little bit better because she can tag out and stuff. So we just summon Ray and go to battle phase right now. And then we have, there can only be one. What a phenomenal card. Now we see what our opponent does next. They obviously have some kind of response. We don't know what it is, but they've got some kind of response. We'll go to battle phase and we'll just attack with what we've got here, which is our barrier statue and our ray. There we go. Get some easy attacks in. It is set that there can only be one. Again, I'm not activating Messenger of Peace just yet, and we just pass. Uh, it's prompting me to make Sioux Ship, but obviously, what, what is Sioux Ship going to do right now? All it's going to do is turn off our floodgate, and we lose the ray. So, not right now, Sioux Ship. At a later date, I will summon Sioux Ship. He's going to set another card. As long as this dude does not draw the outs, we're good. Now, I just realized something about Master that's interesting. Uh, the cards that are, have been set already have this, like, aura around them, but the cards that have been set this turn don't have that aura around them, which is actually cool. I, I never noticed that until I just looked across the, the field there. So if you have, like, Twin Twisters or something and you want to target the newly set back row, for example, you would target, you know, the ones that don't have the aura. I had no idea. I just looked over there for the first time and, and noticed that. He's going to summon the exo sister martha which does have enough attack to get over both our monsters but we have obviously our own forms of removal so he's going to attack the barrier statue and i am going to activate the paleozoic dinomiscus targeting the martha i think i have to get rid of the nefariousness just in case because yeah we have to get rid of that just in case we need the messenger of peace in the end so i think that is the better thing to target and the fairness wasn't enough for game anyway because that would have been four thousand and not enough to win but we do still have there can only be one messenger of peace we still have other stuff that's actually better that that's game now right yeah that is game that is uh 4350 right 4350 yeah I and mean, he has 47 anyway it doesn't matter uh that would have been game that would have actually been game actually no because i can't special summon him anyway I keep going back and forth. No, I wouldn't have been able to special summon anyway. So let's attack now. And uh, now what does suck is that although we have quite a bit of damage here, we're missing just a little bit. But next turn, got decent play. I think we activate Messenger of Peace anyway. Yeah, we activate Messenger of Peace. Main phase two, we activate Messenger of Peace. And the Messenger of Peace should help us a lot because he can't attack and we can just pop our own Messenger of Peace next turn. If we don't want to have it on board anymore, we just pop the Messenger of Peace and we're good to go. And he's got 350 remaining here, and we've got quite a bit of stuff. And then, worst case scenario, let, let's say he outs the barrier, and let's say we won. It's just in case he outed the barrier statue and the messenger of peace, we could just Sky Striker, Ace Ray, and just attack directly because we have uh, the monster in the extra deck. But yeah, that was a clean win. One of our like bread and butter older strategies. All right, so we've got one legacy ticket and this card, which is super slow. One of the worst cards I've ever read. All right, let's open up a master pack. So we've got a super rare lingering in there. Pretty cool. Let's see. Last last week's pulls were, or last episode's pulls were just terrible. We've got a Witchcrafter card, probably not useful. Typhoon is pretty good. Target one face of spawn trap card, destroy it. And then we can activate it from our hand. I remember if there's two or more traps on the field. A little slow. Locker, Slacker Magician's a decent card, but obviously it requires level ones. We don't really use level ones like that but i mean it's good to keep in mind virtual world card ghost fusion's pretty cool it's a zombie fusion but we don't have the monsters to summon which by the way completely side side note for a second uh zombies need more generic fusions because this card has very few monsters that you can actually summon i think the only monster that you can like summon is 
maybe like the eldritch monster like you can summon technically starving venom i don't think there's a zombie fusion monster that you can actually summon with this card so if you have like rivalry up you actually can't even like summon this in a zombie deck uh which is kind of zombies don't have their own fusion monster that they can summon appliancer we don't have enough appliancers to make that usable we have a second copy of this card okay that's interesting um and then let's see what our super rare here is it's time to stand up all right so this card honestly overall is not a terrible card but we just don't have any of the components needed for this to uh, be usable we don't have any of this like we don't have the level eight dragon synchro we, i mean we don't have a dragon synchro i don't think we especially some two monsters that resonate we don't have those uh when a monster effect is activated, you control level 10 Synchro Dragon, banish this, negate the effect. One Synchro monster you control against 2,000. We don't have that. Like, we don't have any of this stuff. So, although it's not like a terrible card, we just we don't have any of the components necessary to do anything with this. All right, let's open this singular legacy ticket, which is a UR right at the start of the episode. That's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully, let's see what it is under here. Surprise Chain. I'm going to read that in a second. An electric virus is actually a decent card. It lets you discard, target a machine, or dragon. Your opponent controls. Take control of it until the end phase. Not bad. Uh, dragon and machine are the second, I think, the second and third most uh, populous types in the game. So if we're playing against Blue Eyes, pretty good. Now, if we play it against Dark Magician, it's a totally dead card. So that's one thing about this. Now, the other thing about this card is actually this card can, now that my mind has connected all the information, this card can actually summon Thunder Dragon Colossus. I just realized. Uh, now, it doesn't summon itself, so we won't have a Thunder Monster, but technically it is a Thunder Monster that can trigger in the hand and then we meet the conditions for Thunder Dragon Colossus, but we don't have a Thunder Dragon on field, so it's still, it, it's it's a decent thing to think about uh, against certain decks. Now, Surprise Chain, what in the world could this card do? All right, so this card sucks. I don't even know. This is like, if I know, this is probably pack filler from one of the last sets. It's absolute garbage. Uh, it just, you activate as a chain link to a higher, evacuate two cards or excavate two cards uh, if it's two two plus you excavate two cards and then put some back um if it's three or more you just get the send cards off the top okay and then if it's four or more you get to draw a card which is that part's nice uh but at best in a chain link four situation this is drawing you one card and at worst, it just excavates cards, which in our deck does nothing plus you have to put them back anyway so overall not really a usable card electric virus is shockingly more usable than the other card but even that is not really usable because again against machine and dragon decks phenomenal against anything else this is this this just does nothing it's just a brick in hand all right so we just won the coin flip and our hand is looking pretty serious i'm not gonna lie this hand's looking pretty good uh we have dimensional fit this is a floodgate hand if i've ever seen it we have dimensional fissure grand horn of heaven tin goldfish which i think i'm gonna set this face down because it's got 2000 defense i didn't even know that i think we're just gonna set that i'm gonna leave the power frame for later just in case our opponent randomly has uh harpy's feather duster and then just an otk deck all right so our opponent is playing cyber darks i'm not gonna lie to you dimensional fissure is pretty damn good against cyber darks i mean this is like they never none of their monsters ever hit the graveyard that's pretty sick um, and they can't re-equip anything, so I, Dimensional Fissure is one of those cards that's going to win us. <laughs> I mean, just as I was talking about it, this card is going to win us games. It's There Can Only Be One. It's it's the Fire Barrier Statue. Like, there are just certain games we're just going to win just because we activate that card, just because we won the coin flip. Like, it's, it's one of those cards that's really, really, really good. All right, so after making our opponent Rage Quit, we've got two cards in Legacy Pack and Castle of Dark Illusions. Awesome card in the show, but in real life, it, it's kind of trash unfortunately 1930 defense is really cool though uh, i think that's that's actually really awesome uh overall i like this card in the show like i said it's a cool it's a cool card i love the stats on it. it's absolutely bizarre uh but but again not really uh not really gonna work for us in this challenge at least at this junction all right let's see what we get out of this master pack it's glowing but glows don't mean anything unless they're rainbow glows apparently those are the only glows that matter. This is a really good card if we ever pull Ready Fusion. 
Uh, this, I don't think we can ever summon. One tuner synchro monster, two or more non tuner synchro monsters. It's not happening. War Rock, do I even have to read this? All right, so I actually, funny enough, it's a good thing I did read this because uh, it's not a bad card. If an Earth Warrior monster is normal summoned, you can special summon the card. You know what we have? A Warrior deck. You know what that Warrior deck is full of? Earth Warrior monsters. This card is actually not bad at all. Uh, so that just gets thrown into that deck. It's, yeah, not a bad card at all. 1900 attack, 1900 defense, level 4. Just a solid card. I actually think that card is quite good. Uh, what do we have in here? Perry Rees map. You know what this searches? This searches our boy, Vidjom. But unfortunately, we have recently actually cut Vidjom. We're hoping to pull more Vidjoms and less ways to get to Vidjom, which this is a way to get to Vidjom. This also searches things like Effect Veiler if we had it. Um, it searches like, I don't know, what's another good card that it could possibly search? Uh, just any level, any zero attack monster it can basically search. Uh, the Numeron card. So we'd have to look through what we can search. It's not a bad card at all. Uh, Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon, we can't summon that uh this is target one face up monster half its current attack and defense we have the one that makes attack not half but we have the one that makes attack uh we might replace something in our deck for this because this might technically speaking be better than what we're playing uh so this might be our first we have the one that reduces attack by like 500 attack or something but technically speaking half the attack is better Target one face up, yeah, half the current attack is better because it can protect our barrier statue better. So we might replace something. Revival Golem's a solid card, but again, we don't really mill in our deck, so it's not going to really work. But basically, if this card's sent from the deck to the graveyard, we have to special summon it or add it to our hand. Both those effects are fairly good. And then another copy of Mateon, the Time Lord, which again is not... Wow, this pack was actually quite... It's okay. This pack's okay. Uh, there's a lot of cards that are decent. I did cut... Um, uh, Mateon. There's another card that I caught. He's he's had great like uses in our deck, but nine times out of ten, like almost one ten times out of ten, if I win the coin flip, I'm going to pick to go first. And going second, this card has it's it's threaded the needle and it's allowed us to win a couple of times. But if we're going to be honest with ourselves, most of the time, if we're going second, we're already down. So it's it's having another one's pretty good and i just realized uh the parry reeves map can actually search the monster uh but unfortunately the monster until the end of the next turn uh the next turn after this card's act you cannot activate the added monsters effects of or monsters of the same name until you normal summon that monster um, and that would work with Mateon because we can normal summon this card without tribbing so i just realized the parry reeves map can search Mateon, which is quite nice and then uh yeah, so we can actually we have if we have we have two copies of this plus we have this plus we have Zaphion, which is the other Time Lord. So essentially, we have like a little bit of a Time Lord, a little bit of a Time Lord deck going there. We have a little Time Lord core, and then like I said, the Paleozoic is probably going to be playing immediately. All right, so we've got the Legacy tickets. Let's see what we get out of these. Uh, we've been pulling URs actually out of these, but I don't think the URs are really that great. Lava Battle Guard, not really. Lucky Punch. All right, this is the F uh, Self DK card. Uh, I'm not going to self DK myself, so that's fine. I'm not going to play that. But Lava Battle Guard is not going to work either. Muka Muka, we already have. And this is actually a good card. We can special summon this by banishing an insect monster from the graveyard. This is a really, really solid card. Destroyed by Battle, we can add a B Trooper from our deck. This is just a solid, solid, solid card. Uh, it's one of the it's a really good b trooper it's an extender it's a really good card uh but we're not playing an insect deck we keep pulling random insect support i got to take a look at it the problem with the insect stuff is we don't have like anything to really do with it like uh, we have this we have doom dozer we have cards here and there but we don't have anything like really good with the insects um none of these are really usable all right let's make a small adjustment so i'm putting in the paleozoic and i'm taking out the unbreakable spirit so i'm going to save that unbreakable spirit's not a bad card but unbreakable spirit requires us to have like monsters and a certain a certain monsters this is technically better because it could just half the attack and then next turn we can get a free paleozoic onto our board i think that's just slightly better uh if we keep pulling like decent battle traps i want to replace power frame eventually because power frame is another one when a face up monster you control target for an attack like has certain requirements i'm not really fond of so i'm going to save that and uh yeah, that's not bad. Slight improvements is better than no improvements, so I'm happy with what we've made. Small, small changes we made. All right, we just lost the coin flip, and our hand is still looking fairly good here. I'm not going to lie, this hand looks pretty good. Our opponent's going to gold sarcophagus, which depending on what this is, could be 
It smelled doom for us. It's going to be a Necroface. I'm intrigued already. Uh, I don't mind Necroface being the card. He's playing Thunder Dragons with Bestials, which, which is pretty good. And then we're going to banish some stuff too. We lost some decent cards. We lost some, some soldiers here. We got two... Two Familiar Possessed, a Broken Line, and a Crackdown. So we lost some good stuff. If our opponent's looking at this, they're probably like, this moron is playing... Probably thinks we're playing like an... I don't even know. What do you think we're playing? Probably like a Familiar Possessed deck. And never mind, he's playing Nephthys. Well, that just took a turn. And he's going to mill three cards, and he's going to... He's got the Nemesis Corridor. With all of those, like, m those... I guess technically banish mills, he still didn't really accomplish much. Uh, did he banish... Did he mill any... He's going to maxi us. Uh, that's fine. I was going to special summon stuff, but being that he maxied us, I'm not going to special summon stuff. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, I'm just going to go to battle phase and just attack because he didn't. Yeah, I'm just going to go battle phase and attack. I was going to Nahata and do other stuff, but being that he did what he did, we just go to battle phase and attack over his 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 uh, Ragnarok. Yeah, it kind of sucks, but whatever. Uh, now we've got decent cards here. We have There Can Only Be One and stuff. And There Can Only Be One will essentially guarantee that... It'll essentially guarantee that Thunder Dragon Colossus will never be summoned. Because the second a Thunder Monster hits the board, we just There Can Only Be One, and they are stuck on that monster. So, at least that's good. And now, we, this Gold Sarcophagus is counting down ominously. It's going to activate the Nemesis Monster, the Flag. Target a Banished Monster. Does it add it back to hand? Special Summon this card. Special summon this card and shuffle it into the deck. All that's fine. So he's going to shuffle. It doesn't matter what he targeted. I can't do anything about it anyway. So he's going to be able to summon that. Put the corridor back in the deck. I would love to pull corridor. I really want to pull corridor. Oh, this adds corridor. That's good to know. Well, that is good to know. Okay. So he's going to be able to do that. Like I said, the second that he's going to add corridor, the second that corridor hits the field, I am going to. There can only be one immediately. He's going to activate corridor. He's going to target Thunder Dragon. He's going to shuffle that card into the deck. And now, on summon, I'm going to activate There Can Only Be One because I do not want Thunder Dragon Colossus to be on this field whatsoever. So he's going to be stuck on two things. He's stuck on Thunder and he's stuck on Pyro. And now he's going to activate to add... What is he adding? Prometheus. Prometheus, we do have the out to Prometheus. He's going to put the Prometheus. He's going to add that back to hand. Prometheus is the is uh, I didn't see what it was it's probably a dragon right or he's a worm He can banish three different monsters with different attributes But he doesn't have that right now. He has two monsters with different attributes But even when he does have that monster we have Paleozoic Dino Miscus anyway, so it doesn't matter Oh, he's gonna oh from the field too. That's good to know. Okay So now we can actually horn of heaven grand horn of heaven this monster. He can't be destroyed by, by card effects So I think we are going to Grand Horn of Heaven this card. We're going to let our opponent draw, but I think this is a necessary thing to do. Let him draw, and now he's got two cards remaining. That's still not too bad. We're going to leave the Dinomiscus, and we still have other stuff for the Dinomiscus. I just realized that he has more attack than I do. So he's going to attack us. I'm going to activate the Forbidden Chalice to beef our own monster up. I should have waited, but I mean, whatever. And he's going to lose his monster, and now he's got three monsters, or two monsters in Graveyard, not three. But I think we're in a decent situation here. He's going to Normal Summon Ash Blossom, which put Chaining on again, because now he's got three monsters, and he can summon the Arch Nemesis that's in his hand right now. He can summon that out. And as soon as he does, I'm just going to activate the, yep, the Paleozoic Dinomiscus. This can't be destroyed by card effects, but it can't, can still be banished. So we're going to discard this, and we're going to banish his monster. So now we've left him with nothing, but he does have the thing coming back next turn. But we've dealt with some, some, some difficult stuff here, which is good. We didn't draw a monster. I would have gone into Time Thief if I could, but I didn't. We're going to go to Battle Phase, and we're just going to attack directly. And I don't know what this card is. It's been on the field forever, so <laughs> we'll see what it is uh, later on, I guess. We're going to set the Forbidden Chalice. I'm going to pass on this one. He Now he gets to add back the Necro Face from way in the beginning. 
Necroface lets him shuffle back everything. On summon. We can negate Necroface because it's only 1200, right? Yeah, Necroface we can negate the normal summon effect. Yes, we're going to negate it. Activate Necroface because I don't want him gaining a bunch of attack and then shuffling all these resources back. I'd rather just negate the Necroface on summon. Necroface isn't strong enough to get over our monster. So now we keep these things where they are. It's going to go to end phase. Perfect, perfect, perfect. He's got an interesting deck, I'll tell you that. He does have an interesting deck. I'm just going to normal summon this. I think that's the better option right now. I think we just go to battle. I think we just go to battle. We've got... Yeah, we just go to battle. What is this, a warrior? Yeah, I was wondering, like, why, why am I allowed to summon that? Uh, so now we're going to go to battle. We're going to attack over his monsters. Main phase two, I think we go to the goat time thief. Because he seems to be playing a lot of different stuff. Spells, traps, monsters. Well, spells and monsters. We go to main phase two. And we go to Mr. Time Thief. Although we could also go... Could have also just gone into the Sioux ship, but... I think this is... Probably better. Especially if we start getting draw cards off the top, I think it's better. I think we just pass here. Yep, we just pass on this. We also... The alternatively could have just left your goodies on, on the board, and if this gets destroyed, we get to do stuff, so... We have a few different options, but I think they're all decent. We get to activate Time Thief Redoer. It's going to imperm the Time Thief Redoer. And I think that the smart play is actually to activate the Time Thief Redoer to banish himself just in case he has like a... Just in case he has something really good like um, like, a, like a lightning storm. Not a lightning storm, but you know, just a card of that caliber. I should have activated that Paleozoic too. I didn't get to. Because I guess Paleo's Oak needs to chain directly to the trap card. Now he's going to activate the Nemesis. This is bad. This is actually really bad for us. He's going to add back the... Shuffle back this Arch Nemesis. But he can add other Nemesis cards. Like Flag and stuff. He's going to get the Flag out. Normal summon the Necro Face. Shuffle back all of his Banish. Shuffle back all of my Banish too. Which includes my Time Thief, so he's not coming back. And he put quite a bit of damage down in a very small amount of time. It is... Yeah, he put 57 worth of damage onto the board. Now he's going to throw it all away. He's going to summon a Reprodocus. A Reprodocus. And now he's going to activate those two and that. Or banish that stuff to summon the Arch Nemesis Protos. And banish some stuff off of the Necro Face. And I think that this will wrap it up for us. I think I think we lose this duel. He's going to destroy all the dark monsters and prevent me from summoning darks. I think this duel is over. Depending on what we draw, I mean, it could be still within range. But, I mean, these Nemesis cards are just really, really good. Uh, we draw Nefariousness. Yeah, it's not good enough. And we just set Nefariousness and just pass. But, I don't, again, I don't, I don't believe that this should be enough for us. Right, he's going to attack over the Nefariousness, and then he's going to attack directly. We have... We played pretty well so far, so I can't even really complain. There can only be one was less impactful than I would... <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Now we stop the duel. We turn things into a standstill. We just pass here. That's good. So I guess we just stall until we can get to a... Uh, until we can get to Mr... Crusadia Avermax, I think we just stopped the duel. We have 11 turns to get to Crusadia Avermax if we can. Oh, never mind. <laughs> he had the 1100 attack monster. That's perfect. We had 1100 attack. Like, we have 1100 life points exactly. That deck was actually really cool. I enjoyed that quite a bit. This was my opponent's deck. Again, remember, the worse the deck, they, they, they never brick. Look at this pile of stuff. It's just a pile of random stuff. But the dude doesn't brick. Uh, I guess it's like a uh, Metaphys, you know, like Metaphys, well, not really Metaphys, because they're just using this to banish, that's the only reason they're playing, it's like a Metaphys, Necroface, which should be at three, let's be honest, and then they've got, like, uh, Corridor, and, uh, you know, stuff like this, like, the Arch Nemesis, the Promethe Prometheus, the other Arch Nemesis, so it's, it's basically a Nemesis deck with, 
like an engine from Aloof Lupine and, and that and Allure of Darkness. It looks like a really, really fun deck to play. It's actually not even that breaky now that I'm looking at it. It is a little odd. It's like one of, it's like evenly matched at one, Drake Utopia at one. Like he's got some one ofs, but overall, this looks like a really, really fun deck to play. All right, so we just lost the coin flip, but our opponent actually chose for us to go first, which is something I'll accept. I mean, all right. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. I'm going to go ahead and just summon the barrier statue and set Crackdown. I think that is pretty good. The other chance, you know, we could have also Time Thief if we wanted to, but I think that this is probably better because Crackdown's pretty good. If he summons a level 4 monster, we can actually steal his level 4 monster, which is kind of cool. Um, and if he summons not a level 4 monster, we can still steal it. So either way, we can steal it. We've been a villain all episode long. Uh, which I kind of like. Okay, he's going to Lightning Storm us. That does happen from time to time. He's going to destroy Spawn Trap cards. So now he can out that Barrier Statue. He's going to... Okay, Painful Decision. Maybe he's playing Sue Ships? Sue Ships. A Fire... A <laughs> Fire Aqua deck. We have a Barrier Statue. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. Yeah, I, I, I think this is this is it. <laughs> yeah, this 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 is this is wrapped up. We're we're not winning this one. I should have known when his name was Shoji, and I saw this board, uh, which by the way is a really cool board. Yeah, this guy this guy this guy got us. <laughs> I don't think we could possibly win this one. This is uh, we're getting OTK'd here. He's gonna go into this. He's gonna be able to draw a card. On a side note, I do actually want to pull the regular uh, shari because i don't know if you guys know this but the regular shari is a level 4 2000 attack monster so stat wise it's already phenomenal right it's already better than most of our level fours uh but on top of that i th don't know if a lot of you guys know this but if you summon the sioux ships they have additional effects if you use certain monsters as material so if you use the shari which is the level four normal monster you actually get to draw an additional card on top of the already decent effects on the dreadnought uh, we can declare our name. I don't feel like typing this. I don't know why they're making me do this. This is kind of insane that they're making you do this. So we can target one. I guess let's do this one. But that is unbelievable that he's going to make them. I shouldn't have done that one, by the way. I should have done one of the other ones, the ones that aren't on there. But I just gave him a good one. But I'm just kind of helping him LTK at this point. I, yeah, this, this duel's wrapped up. He's going to combo off for 10 minutes. Uh, but it's, yeah, that was, that was, that was unlucky. All right, so we just won this coin flip. Our hand's pretty solid, actually. It just depends on what our opponent's playing. Uh, we've got we've got D Fissure and we've got the Ad Emancipator. I think probably familiar possessed right now. We just summon that out, and I think we just activate D Fissure. We set the Chalice. We set the Paleozoic. And I think we just summon Win. I would usually summon this, but there's no point to summon that. Um, and try okay we just got a free auto win wonderful okay yeah I, this is we, we've just gone full villain today we just uh this card has been absolutely killing it i mean you know it's it's d fissure does destroy so much of the game uh so it's incredible how how easily we're winning all right so we've got two tickets and the snail there you go spike snail this is a goofy looking card he has another version too i believe it's in magical this is a funny looking card so out of curiosity, this is what our opponent's playing. No way, we actually beat we actually beat Snake Eyes. Finally. The barrier statue was not enough. Uh there can only be one was not enough. We finally have the card that actually was enough, which is dimensional fishery. It's 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 enough to actually beat this deck, which is incredible. Alright, let's get uh let's get another pack here. I've been a complete just monster, a villain, uh one of the worst to ever grace this earth in Master Duel. I just keep pulling some of the most dastardly cards. Another sub terror. Okay, yeah, we're we're definitely gonna. By the end of this, we're like we're like Thanos. We're just gonna we're gonna end up be having like the most uh, villainous deck ever. I'll shut all Windigo, uh, which we already have. Super Soldier Synthesis can't really use that. Danger. I mean, we have a single Danger card, and this card's not that good. Um, Mischief of Mischief of the Yokai. I've never heard of this card. So this is actually not bad against XC decks, and it's not bad against, like, yeah, XC decks and Synchro decks. I guess it wouldn't be too bad against, it's kind of worthless against Link decks, but it's a decent stun card, but a little bit slow. It just prevents certain extra deck mechanics. Dark, um, 
Mabel. This card's not bad. It's always been fairly decent, but you need to control three or more dark monsters, and then you can target one card on the field to banish it. It's a little slow. And then we've got Buster Welp, which we already have, and a Medolce uh, Promenade, which is a good card, but we don't have any of the components to really use it well. Um, nothing here is really too usable for us. Maybe this, if we start, if we get more of the sub terror stuff we might end up going in the sub terror direction so now we have another decent sub terror card all right so let's see what we get out of these legacy tickets uh we're still dying for more barrier statues let's see what we get judge man cool card and curse of the circle target one monster your opponent controls your opponent cannot tribute it or use it as synchro material i mean again if we're playing in sword soul it is good it, i just realized this is like spellbinding circle but I guess it was Spellbinding Circle during the, the Synchro era. And then Judge Man, I mean, obviously that's a little out of it by now. But that's a cool card. It's a cool looking card. I always like the artwork on that card. It's a nice starter deck card. Uh, with this we already have. We're not using Sword of Dark Destruction equipped to a dark. Gains 400 attack. I mean, come on. it's We're, 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 we're well past that point. All right. So we just won the coin flip again. Uh, not a bad hand. And we have Spellcaster plus awaited you know the nefariousness somebody said to take out nefariousness the only thing i don't like about nefariousness is he's kind of annoying but other than that he's kind of a, a decent card so we're going to normal summon this we're going to special summon yeah he's good because he's a free special summon but he is a little annoying because he like triggers at the end phase and keeps begging to be summoned so we go into time thief because that's our best option and we have battle traps which again the battle traps are like all of these battle traps are good if we draw barrier statue if we don't draw barrier statue the battle traps can be a bit slow i just realized we haven't seen small world in quite some time too uh we're standby phase let's activate time thief we have not seen small world in forever this would have been a perfect hand to see small world our opponents playing something <laughs> we got a maxi off the top uh, they could be playing just about any deck in the world they're playing blue eyes okay so again with blue eyes the main issue with blue eyes is jet other than jet we don't struggle with blue eyes if, if jet never came out we probably probably would be beating blue eyes more often but jet is just one of those cards that's just so infuriating to play against just because it uh it, it basically it protects all the cards around it and on top of protecting all the cards around it it uh it can bounce a card when it declares an attack on top of that it can summon itself whenever cards destroyed. Our opponent has multiple max chaos max dragons. Which, I mean, we have not. I don't want to say the out, but we have messenger of peace, which prevents chaos max dragon from doing anything. So he can activate all this stuff, but we have messenger of peace, so chaos max dragon will never attack. And generally, blue eyes players don't play a lot of back row removal. But this guy might actually summon two chaos max dragons. He might actually be able to to do it. And he's going to activate another red advanced ritual art, which I mean. Again, the cards that he has to waste in order to do all of this is, is good because then we don't have to worry about what else is in his hand. Now, Chaos Max for us is a somewhat tough card to out. I don't know how many trap cards he's playing, so it could be tough to out. He's playing a lot of spells, a lot of tra a lot of monsters, we know that. He put all of his blue eyes in the graveyard, and now he's got other cards. He's going to send another dragon, that's fine. He's got all of his blue eyes already in the graveyard, and he's going to send just Jet to the graveyard. Okay, that's fine. So Jet is, again, Jet is annoying. Jet is the main card we have a problem with. So Chaos Max is, is somewhat difficult to deal with, but Jet is like the card that is just on another level of just annoying. Um, we have to find a way to banish it or do something with it. Unfortunately, Time Thief doesn't really out Jet. Messenger of Peace is honestly the best card that we've got right now. All right, let's go back to our turn. Let's go. We have, there can only be one is actually really good in this situation. It's phenomenal in this situation. Uh, so we're going to activate this, hopefully get a spell or a trap. We got a monster. And this is the worst kind of monster that you could possibly get. It's a white stone of ancients. It's the worst monster that you could possibly get. Uh, we're going to activate the messenger of peace and we're just going to pass. Unfortunately, the, the problem with white stone of ancients is if it gets sent from anywhere, including from the field, uh, including from exceed material, it gets to trigger at the end phase. But once we have there can only be one, I'm not going to have to worry about Stone of the Ancients anymore. So we're going to activate Time Thief. Hopefully we get a spell card because spell card will allow us to draw. And we do get a spell card. That's good. And our opponent's going to set one ominously in this column. He's not going to be able to attack. But he did the classic noob set then go to battle phase. I'm going to go ahead and activate the Time Thief Redoer. And yeah, I'm going to activate Time Thief Redoer for now i could also activate there can only be one and then get rid of one of the chaos max dragons that could be a smart thing to do right now 
but I could do that at any given time. So I don't really need to do that right now. So I might as well not do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to draw hard. Photon Thrasher is not bad if we go to battle phase and do stuff. We still need it. I mean, we have, our deck has an out to Chaos Max Dragon. This does not, this targets actually, which is not good for us. But yeah, we, we do have an out to Chaos Max Dragon, so we'll be fine. So we're going to get a card off the top. It's a Royal Rare alternative. And we have to resolve this. We have to pay the life points. Yes. And I think we just, this can't be normal summoner set, so we can't actually summon this. Uh, this doesn't really do anything dimensional prison, but it's better set than it is on the field. So we'll set it. And we just pass here. And then we just keep draw, going for or, uh, draw cards off the time thief like i said this guy's got kind of a newbie deck noobs usually aren't too intelligent with backer removal so they'll just cut it in favor of more consistency cards for chaos max and hopefully that's the situation that we're in we haven't beat blue eyes in quite some time unless it's like we've got barrier statues going to imperm us in the column of the messenger piece which is smart really smart action uh but it's fine because we have we could actually i think if we activate the time thief and get them off the board then this won't resolve anyway and he won't be able to attack so i'm just going to do that um yeah this monster won't be on the board and nothing will be negated which is actually probably perfect he's going to ash blossom intelligent but it's fine because we still have the there can only be one so we might lose time thief but we have there can only be one still so we'll at least out the stuff on his board so the messenger of peace is temporarily negated so we may end up losing time thief now which sucks for us but it is what it is uh now we activate there can only be one and he's gonna have to get rid of one of his two monsters and jet won't be coming out which is also good so he'll lose that one but he still gets to attack with this other chaos max dragon we do lose the goat the time thief free doer but it's fine because we'll we'll figure it out now we have to play a little more intelligently because you know we've got Got, we've got to find a way to get it to chaos to crusadia if we get the crusade avermax i think we've got this duel in the bag because he can he crusade avermax shits on blue eyes chaos max dragon um, along with some other cards that we have so yeah i think that's our best bet is to get to that in terms of other outs in our deck we have yeah we just basically have the crusade avermax nothing in our deck really outs it other than crusade avermax so we can special summon and then definitely activating this and resolving it yes we're going to pay the life points uh we're going to special summon photon thrasher and we're just going to normal summon out the the familiar possessed i think that is probably the best that we've got right now i'm not going to link climb until we've got something more more concrete that we can do so i'm just going to summon those two and hopefully we just keep drawing monsters or ways to get to monsters all right our opponent's going to activate this to add one back you can probably it doesn't matter really who he adds back because the reality is um it literally doesn't matter because he can't summon them anyway so he can add back whoever he wants he's gonna add back a regular blue eyes and that's completely fine you can add back blue eyes he's gonna summon out max c with 500 attack he can go into a link two which isn't too unintelligent he's gonna go into a link two probably a charmer okay so you can summon out time thief that sucks for us uh yeah you can summon out the the charmer all right you can summon out the time thief and obviously time thief is pretty good but we do have we do have outs to it so if he attacks right now time thief is nothing uh but he will be something in a little while and activate that yeah time thief can get very dangerous very quickly if we don't find a way to out it he's gonna add back a blue eyes and a jet and he still can't attack so right now he's basically a, he's done right now unless he gets to more monsters but i think he's pretty much done right now and he's gonna go to end phase which is fair enough he can activate nefariousness but he's not doing anything he's just bothering us if he could just pop a card and special summon himself he'd be so much better small world does nothing right now because it's by itself uh we have to pay the life points for this he can unfortunately time thief our cards which is really bad because we actually play trap cards and stuff and yeah what do you get a trap card of course he gets a trap card of course he gets a trap card because we never get trap cards of course he gets a trap card now we should go to end phase i could have gone into oh i guess he didn't use it anyway he didn't use time thief anyway should have used time thief on my end phase to put back either there can only be one or messenger of peace but right now there's two floodgates that are preventing him from playing and uh that's that's good for us but the good thing is we technically outed we technically outed his he's gonna get a what uh monster tinfoil goldfish 
we technically outed his both his chaos max dragons which is pretty good and his jet is stuck in grave so we did a lot of things that were actually quite productive here all right he's going to activate the effect to detach and I, I guess put one of the cards back on top of the deck if it's this one it's actually not a bad thing because we have the dimensional prison and we have sarketsu armor sakuratsu armor uh he searched most of his level 8s, but they're the only ones that are really scary. So I'm going to say 8. Uh, it could also be a level 1. But whether the level 1 hits the field or hits the graveyard is irrelevant, so I'm just going to pick 8. It's an 8. Perfect, so it goes to graveyard. And he's got another Royal Rare. That's crazy. All these Royal Rares. He's got so many Blue Eyes Royal Rares. He's going to battle, go to battle. Uh, the Time Thief is already activated its effect, so he can't dodge anymore. I'm going to actually, do I want to destroy Time Thief or banish it? I want to destroy Time Thief and I want to banish this one. So I'm going to, actually if I destroy Time Thief, he can just activate this again. to a special summon, right? It's not like it's once per turn, it's not on summon. So I might as well Dimensional Prison my own Time Thief. Because the other one doesn't have enough attack points to do anything. Uh, technically this can recur a monster, but... What is he, does he have any Darks in Grave? I mean, he can get recurred, um... Chaos Max, that's it. He can recur Chaos Max. So we're going to activate the Sakuretsu Armor. We're going to pop that. He can recur the Chaos Max, whatever. Yeah. Oh, he's going to activate Jet. The jet, jet is mad annoying. See, that's not good. That's actually not good. Jet coming out. And Jet can actually bounce things, too. So he can bounce the... There can only be one. But fortunately, next turn, we have the same loop going on again. He's going to go to End Phase, yeah. Uh, nefariousness isn't really... Gonna help right now. There are situations where he technically should help, but we just don't know them yet. Now we've got there can only be one and messenger of peace. So we're gonna messenger of peace and we're gonna set there can only be one. And we're just gonna pass on this. This should be enough for us right now. And uh, I'm just gonna, in the standby phase, activate there can only be one because the blue eyes is a summoning. Actually, I don't need to do that. I was going to do it right away, but I don't really need to do that until he enters the battle phase or anything like that. He's going to bingo machine go. That's fine. He's going to reveal three copies of fusion. He's playing all the bricks. If he activates that, we literally just... There can only be one in fizzle, so it doesn't even matter. Our opponent's going to activate the fusion. I am going to chain there can only be one. If I chain this, then this won't resolve because he needs to... Uh, essentially attempt to summon a dragon from the deck, but he can't. From the extra deck, but he can't. I don't think that he can. Yeah, it's going to fizzle. It's going to go to graveyard because there's nothing that he can summon that's not a dragon. going to go to battle phase. He can't attack, so it's pointless anyway. Now this is, like I said, this is the card that's like really annoying to deal with. The uh, blue eyes jet is just unreal. He does everything. Barrier statue is pretty damn good right now, but problem is what does barrier statue really do for us i mean it, it, it stalls the game for sure honestly enough i think that the better card in this situation is actually bestial magnema because it allows us to get a little farther it allows us to banish one of his blue eyes cards and then special summon itself but then again barrier statue is pretty good the problem is I, I need something else plus barrier statue so if i had yeah if i had like Lightning Vortex plus Barrier Statue, that would be awesome. Or like the Paleozoic plus Barrier Statue or something, or Crackdown or, or one of these other cards plus Barrier Statue. I think we could do something, but Barrier Statue on his own is, is good, but it's not really doing anything right now. But I think it's pretty good to hit the board. He can't attack and he can't summon anything, so that is pretty good. And we can get rid of the Barrier Statue anytime we want to, because we can make a Hita. So it's not like Barrier Statue is, is is a concern to us. Like, literally, anytime we want to, we get rid of it, so we just leave it on board. Plus, he has Ash Blossom in Graveyard, so he can, uh, that'll help us get to, so if we need, we need one more monster, and then we can get to, we can get to Mr. Crusader Avermax. And Crusader Avermax is really good right now. Like, if we could set up Crusader Avermax, plus there can only be one, plus Messenger of Peace, uh, he's going to go to Battle Phase, can't happen, and then he's going to get out of Battle Phase. Yeah, if we could draw a couple more monsters here, I think we're in really good shape. So we're going to draw its Broken Line. Broken Line's a good card, but it's not right now. If you had any spawn trap cards, that would be awesome, but he doesn't. 
Um, I think we just leave it in hand just in case we draw a Paleozoic or something and we need to discard. He's going to activate Raigeki to destroy all the monsters on our field. I mean, it happens. What can I do? And, and based on the fact that he's got Raigeki, he's probably got Harpy's Feather Duster too. He's going to continue to go to battle phase despite the fact that he can't. And yeah, we need to draw some monsters. Like, that's not bad. I wish I had that like <laughs> a second ago. Uh, that's not bad at all. Because that cuts his attack in half. So I think we just set that and pass. I wish I had this Paleozoic like one turn ago. Because then I could have just attacked over this and then attacked with Barrier Statue. He's going to Normal Summon Ash Blossom. Which is quite interesting. I guess he can go back into the Link plays. He's going to go into a Link 2, which is a Light Charmer. See, do we have a light in graveyard? Yeah, we do. We have our own Lina. He has the real Lina, and we have the, the familiar possessed Lina, which is bad for us. I don't know what he's going to be able to get into eventually. What did he target? Oh, Photon Thrash. Actually, he couldn't target Lina anyway. But he still can't attack, and that's what's important. But he can go into, I guess, Axis Code Talker. Well, he would have to go into the Selene, then Axis Code, but he can't get into Selene. So I guess he's going to go into something else right now. He's going to go into Unicorn to shuffle something away. And he's going to be able to shuffle one of these two away. I don't even know which one would be better. Probably Messenger of Peace because it'll allow him to attack finally. He's going to go to Battle Phase. I think I just save this for now. I don't think I need to activate it. Because it'll cut the attack in half. But I might actually need that for later. So he's going to attack over my monster. Or my life points directly, and then goes back to our turn. This is a really, really needlessly long duel, but I mean, it's like we just don't, we're not drawing monsters, we're drawing them out of order. It's just things are not looking good. So we're going to set this, I think, here. I think we're going to set this here, and we're just going to pass. We do always have the Paleozoic. What's good is we don't have anything for him to destroy, and since we have nothing for him to destroy, we're not getting. J like attacked by Jet, and Jet is really good right now because Jet can actually out this. There can only be one. This is definitely not looking like a great situation for us at all. All right, he's going to declare attack. Our life points are actually getting really, really low. But again, I'd rather draw a monster and then use this than now. I mean, cutting this attack won't matter next because it's yeah, it won't matter anyway. So I might as well just take the damage. And uh, hopefully next turn, we can draw a monster or something that is somewhat usable. We'll just pass here. All right, let's draw for turn. It's Lightning Vortex, um, which is not a bad card, but honestly, I think it's game no matter what. If I activate this, all right, let's say I activate this, he's going to be able to use Jet anyway. And uh, now he's going to trigger Jet and... There's nothing I can do because Jet isn't an inherent summon. It's an effect. So it won't be stopped. Like Grand Horn of Heaven won't do anything. So as you can see, he'll be able to hit the field. And then we can't use Grand Horn of Heaven. So essentially it's the end of the duel. There's nothing we can do. No matter what we do here, uh, we've lost this duel. Yeah, it sucks. We just do things a little too out of order. Which is uh, it's frustrating. And then our opponent got luckier off of our Time Thief than we did. He got a trap card, but that really wasn't like the end of the world. But yeah, we just we just drew things really out of order in this duel. I guess we just activate this anyway. We drew things super duper out of order. All right, he's gonna activate the effect of this, but I mean it doesn't matter. We just lose there. That sucks. That was a, a needlessly long duel that resulted in a loss. That really sucks. All right, we just lost a coin flip. Our hand's looking okay. Uh, we've got. Threatening Roar, Horn of Heaven, Ledger Book, Ad Emancipator, we've got, I mean, we can't use Ad Emancipator because he doesn't control a monster, but Messenger of Peace again, it's not a bad card, I think we just summon this and attack directly, honestly, we can't summon Messenger of Peace right now, at least this card floats into stuff, he's going to use Grave of the Super Organism, that's fine, no, we have the weakest monster ever on the field right now. So it literally doesn't make a difference anyway. He's going to use Threatening Roar. Okay. 
So now we can't attack. He's already... He's wasted a lot of cards on nothing happening, so I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, we're just going to set these, and we're going to end phase anything. We're just going to end phase. We don't need to do anything else. I'm not going to activate Messenger of Peace until I really, really need to. Yeah, like I said, he's down in card advantage, which is crazy to say against anybody. What rarity is this? This is a rare. It's not a bad Floodgate. Uh, this is a decent card. I'm going to set a monster. That's fine with me he's gonna set a card set a monster I, I like i like where this duel is going honestly i like where this duel is going we're gonna draw ray's not bad actually ray attacks directly analyzer's not bad ray's not bad we have a lot of not bad draws and honestly i kind of want to i think i want to summon this ray is nice because she can uh, tag out at any given time so i think i'm gonna go ray and I think I'm just going to go to battle phase. What I, what I like about Ray is that she can tag out onto a monster that attacks directly. So we can attack over this and then attack again and then attack again basically. Magic Cylinder. See this is the perfect situation. We can just trigger Ray and dodge this Magic Cylinder. And then this doesn't resolve or do anything. So if he's playing some kind of a burn deck we can essentially get around whatever he's doing. So that doesn't resolve. And now we get the question here do we attack directly or do we attack this monster i think we just attack directly and then we attack with which of the black forest to attack the monster yeah rays already come up pretty uh pretty cool there now if this monster has a lot of attack hey, it wouldn't have mattered anyway so he's got electromagnetic turtle now what's good is we can attack directly anyway so it doesn't matter that he's got electromagnetic turtle so we have a direct attacker on the field so who cares if he tries to make any link plays we've got grand horn of heaven if he tries to you know, swarm the board. We have ledger book. We have threatening roar. We have we have plays here. All right, he's gonna set another monster. We do still have an attack, like a direct attacker, so we're good. As long as we can keep attacking directly, I think we're pretty much golden here. Uh, I don't even know if this really helps us. Yeah, I, I literally don't know if that even helps this duel right now with what he's playing. Actually, I mean, if we out the electromagnetic turtle, then uh, it goes to it doesn't go to graveyard. It goes to the banished pile. So I guess we'll see. We're activating this obviously. Just to, See what we can trigger. It doesn't really matter. I wish there was like a quicker way to do this. Uh, now we can go into a synchro play here. We can go into the harpy, which isn't bad. We can go into time thief, which is always good. Actually, we, we don't want to go into the uh, we don't want to go into the harpy because we can't actually use its effects because of the graveyard of the super giant organism. Uh, but this is level six or higher. Uh, or higher special summon monsters so these aren't levels these are ranks and link monsters are obviously their own thing now the thing is if we go into I guess this wouldn't be too bad because then we get to search for something too and if we get to search for something what are the arrows on this thing it's up and down all right so that's I, I would have searched for something useful actually let me check what's going on here we can also go uh, we can pop this row I just realized we can pop this row so I think that's the best thing we can do um, this is 1500 or less defense. Oh, but we can't because it's, uh, we don't have any spellcasters. We did normal summon this turn too. All right, so I think we do want to go into some kind of monster here to help us search. I think Time Thief is probably the best. It's either Time Thief or Code Virus. Code Virus is pretty good too, but I think Code Virus is probably the better monster to go into. Actually, no. I don't care about the search off of that card, so I think I'm just going to go Time Thief. I don't care about the Code Virus search. And this card's not doing anything anyway, so... I think we go into Time Thief right here. I don't know why I summon it in this column, but I mean it doesn't really matter all that much. Now we activate Dimensional Fissure. And uh, what's good about Dimensional Fissure is... Uh, when we destroy this Electromagnetic Turtle, it won't go to Graveyard. So this will get destroyed, it won't go to Graveyard, it'll get banished so he won't be able to end the battle phase later on, and then we just attack directly. And that should be good, that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good end board. Now, again, I didn't get the search off of the Witch of the Black Forest, but like I said, the only thing that I would consider maybe searching was, was Mr. Mr. Tiamaton, but... It's fine that I didn't. So now we activate Time Thief, try to grab something off the top that's useful. It's a trap that's about as useful as it gets, and evenly matched. So it really is as useful as it gets. And our opponent's gonna, monster's gonna leave the field here. And they're gonna, our, our draw isn't too great for us. 
Or I'm going to activate the Time Thief Redoer. Hopefully it's a spell card. We could really use a spell right now. It's a trap card. Trap's not bad. Bye bye damage. It's not bad. Okay, whatever. Uh, so now I think we just go to battle phase. I think we're in a really good situation. We're attacking directly. I don't even know if I want to attack his monsters because if they have some weird trigger effects, it, it doesn't matter. We're on a timer. We have three more turns and we win the duel. Do we really need to attack his monsters? I don't think so. So what we're going to do is we're going to activate Time Thief right now. And we're going to actually target the graveyard of... Oh, he's going to ash us. It's, even, it's fine. It's completely fine. Uh, yeah, it's totally fine that he does that. He's going to ash us. I'm, I'm cool with that. I, I don't even want to attack his monsters right now because I'm afraid of what they might be. Some weird flip effects that can out our monsters. So I'm just going to pass on this. And if he wants to flip summon them later and link summon or something that's cool he only has he has basically three more attacks from the hayate right now never thought in my life i would be using hayate but here i am right we're gonna get cool we're gonna get a pot of extravagance which i wish i could keep that <laughs> actually would i even play pot of extravagance i don't know i guess i w i don't know this is always the cost the oh my god he's got a direct attacker too all right, that's fine. But his direct attacker is 350 or 300 attack. So his direct attacker is is is, is cheeks. Uh, this is a direct attacker too. Yeah, that's a direct attacker too. I did not know that was going to be face down. He's got another direct attacker. So he's got essentially the same thing we have. Uh, he's going to be pretty mad when he finds out we have threatening roar. So he's got a direct attacking deck. He's going to link three, and we've got Grand Horn of Heaven. So gonna go into deco talker and i'm sorry to say it will not be staying around so he's gonna lose the deco talker and uh he's gonna draw a card and it's gonna go to main phase two so it's now he can yeah he's gonna go to main he's, he's now in the battle phase so he can go to main phase two if he wants to uh he could have evenly matched so i'm not i'm not triggering the effect of time thief right now because again he could have evenly matched uh, we are, we've already seen it. It's underneath our Time Thief, so I'm not going to trigger that. He's going to end phase. I'm going to activate Time Thief. I'm going to use two effects of Time Thief. I'm going to detach this, and I'm going to detach... Uh, does this have a graveyard effect? I'm just going to detach the, the the other... Oh, and we won! Perfect! So we won the duel. Pretty clean win. That was an interesting deck. I can't wait to check that out. Alright, so we've got two Legacy Tickets. Alright, this is what our opponent was playing. He is playing something. He's a playing a very... He's a playing a burn deck, essentially. Moon Mirror Shields and Mage Power and... Piranha Army. Like, a lot of very interesting, goofy, goofy, super goofy cards. And then, of course, a few modern cards sprinkled in here and there. Uh, I can't even... What is this extra deck, too? What is going on here? This is a good card, Relinquished Anima. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. All right, so we're going to open up a pack here. We've got a glow. It could be anything. Could be good, could be bad. We'll find out. Uh, we've got a... What is this? An Echuria card, which doesn't really help us because we don't have enough Echurias. Mythical Beast. Probably goes in the... If you have no other card in your pendulum, target one card in your graveyard. Play spell counter on it. Blah, blah, blah. Spell counters. I don't think this is too usable for us. Wicked Avatar. Uh, so this card basically requires three tributes, and it will always have 100 more attack than the highest attack on the field. I mean, this is something that we would have 100%. This is, first of all, it's like a copy, right? It's like a, it's an exact, it's like a direct copy of the Sphere Mode artwork. It's like almost the same thing. Uh, but if, yeah, we probably would have played this like early on, but at this point, it's just a lot to give up for nothing. Uh, we already have this card, we're not playing it. This is another card we already have, we're not playing it. Variable form, I believe, Insector card, yeah, nothing we can do with that. Favor Hero is a hero card that we don't have access to, and hopefully this is something decent. Another Die Gusto card. We have a lot of Gustos. We have a lot of Gustos. Okay, so yeah, this is good for a Gusto deck. It's kind of incredible. We have yet another Gusto card. I gotta check out all the Gustos we have. All right, let's open up some legacy tickets. Let's see what we get out of these. Hopefully we get something super useful. A Panda Borg. All right, this card's not bad for that psychic deck that we were putting together. Uh, this is Sis Hunter. Uh, this card is really slow, but it, it, it works with Thunder cards, but it's kind of slow. It is a level four, so that's nice, but it is a bit slow. Let's see what else we got here. We've got... Lamoon, 
what is this? I've never seen this card. That's an odd looking card. Five, level five with 1200 attack. And then Archfiend's Roar. So this card is basically like a Call of the Haunted for Archfiends. The monster can't attack, can't be tributed, and it's destroyed. Or it's, I'm sorry, it, it can attack. It, it cannot be distributed and destroyed during the end phase. So we don't have enough Archfiends. We have Archfiend, I think, Queen, but I think that's it. We don't have too many Archfiends. All right, so for the 12 Gusto players that are on Earth right now, uh, these are the Gustos that we've got. We've got this Digusto, this new one. I think Gusto's a pretty budget deck, actually. I think the only one that is uh, the Eagles. It's the only UR. But, I mean, budget doesn't matter because it's based on what we pull, so it doesn't really... We could, we could pull this next pack, or we could never pull this ever. Uh, same thing with, like, this card right here. We could pull this next pack, or we could never pull it. So it, it doesn't really matter what's budget or not. But this is what we've got so far. So we've got uh, this Digusto girl right here. Um, we've also got the more important one, which is the uh, Spheres. Sphere, uh, Spheres. We have uh, her, too. We have... She's pretty good as far as Gusto cards. Then we've got two of this uh, Gudo, Guldo, Eagle. We have this dude, and then we've got Winda and this card. So we've got not enough to really play it because i remember somebody asking me about it we don't have we only have three main deck monsters or really i mean if you count her i guess destroy but yeah um i guess yeah not not three we have four main deck monsters so if we can summon her and then get some of this off we could have a decent strategy but overall gustos is kind of just generally kind of a lackluster deck and i don't believe that with what we have we're going to be able to uh, do anything too productive all right, so we just won the coin flip. Our hand is actually pretty good. It's pretty good. And our opponent just auto scoops. Okay, so I guess we get another pack. That last pack didn't have anything useful, so another opportunity to pack is, is pretty good. This has been... Uh, I didn't even do anything in the auto scoops, which is good, and our hand was pretty decent. All right, so we've got four legacy tickets. Okay, that's not bad. All right, out of curiosity, this is what our opponent was playing. They're playing the FTK... The Utopia FTK, which we would have 1,000% lost against. I didn't, don't think we drew anything, but we would have lost if we went. If he went first, we would have lost, but we went second, so we won. Um, yeah, I guess they just scoop if they if they lose the coin flip. But yeah, we would have probably lost against this if they went first. All right, let's see what we get out of this master pack. It is shining. Let's see if we get a super or not. It looks like a super. Toy Vendor is a good card. I don't think this is... This is uh, discard a card, draw a card. If it's a flossable... Uh, it's not bad. It's a draw. It's a once per turn draw. So that's not bad. This 1 million percent will go into our Chaos deck. 1 million percent. That's just good, right? Discard, draw. Uh, now... Yeah, if this card's sent to the graveyard, we can add an Edge Imp card or Fluffle Monster, which is also pretty good if we can get this in the graveyard. So all of these effects are quite good. Toy Vendor's always been a decent card, so I, I can't really say anything bad. I don't think this card's really usable. Uh, then we've got... This is with a plant. So, yeah, this is actually a really good card if you have a plant deck, or if you have a plant deck, it's... Yeah, Normal Summon, Spell Trap card is Attribute a Plant, Negate the Activation. Not bad if you have a plant deck, actually. Another plant card. If your opponent controls a monster, special summon this card from your hand. Treat it as a tuner. Special summon one Rose Princess this way. Discard this card. Add one white clo uh, cloister, which I don't believe we have, but adds that. Right hand shark. No way we just drew this. There's no way we actually got this. Wow, we have the combo. What are the chances we actually true like we actually pulled this card? So for those of you that don't know, we have Buzzsaw Shark. And we also have uh, the guy in the extra deck that is unaffected by everything if you only have one card. We actually pulled both of these things, which means that we can summon essentially a monster that's unaffected by everything and can't be destroyed by battle. Uh, the Crooked Cook. So we actually have the full Crooked Cook combo. We have Buzzsaw Shark, Right Hand Shark. That is crazy. We don't have Left Hand Shark, but we don't need that. Uh, if this card's in the grave, you control no monsters. You could special summon this card, banish it when it leaves the field. That's also really good. I didn't even know about that effect. XYZ material, only water monsters gains this effect. Yeah, that's not... That's a really good pull. Uh, Falcon B, or Beta. Uh, this card's not bad, but it's a little slow. It requires our, us to destroy our opponent's monsters by battle. But it's 1,200 attack. Like, dude, who are you destroying by battle? Stop it. 
Uh, solid Dragon is not a very solid card at all. He's one of the worst Blue Eyes cards. And then for our Super Rare here, we've got Ouroboros, which is a really, really good card, actually. It's three level four monsters, which we often are in that situation, actually. And we could detach a material, activate one of these effects, and the effects is target one card your opponent controls, return it to the hand, send a random card from your opponent's from your opponent's hand to the graveyard. This is a UR, by the way. I just why is this a UR? I, I understand this there was a point in time where this card was like an expensive card and it was very, very heavily played in decks. But this is one of those URs that I I can imagine being in a legacy pack. Why, why is this a UR? It's a decent card, but it's not I don't think this is UR worthy. But it's a very good card. It's it's it can send a random card, it can target a card in your opponent's graveyard, banish it, and it can target a card, return to the hand. That is pretty good. Uh, each effect can be used once while this card is face up on the field. Again, this is not a bad card, but it's just we're definitely gonna play it. So this is what we're playing. Right hand shark, I gotta figure out how to like work that into the deck. Toy vendor's good. We have one, two, three very usable cards. If we had a plant deck, this would also be good. This would honestly be pretty good too if we had a plant deck. Alright, let's open these legacy tickets. Let's see what we get out of these. So we got berry statues on our minds. Let's see. Uh, we've got another good another good rank four. So this is basically a level this is a rank four that's basically three thousand attack. That basically what it does. Uh, we can detach one material, change its defense to zero, and change its attack to 3,000. So it's a 3,000 attack rank four. Yeah, and overall, basically what this card is, 3,000. Uh, you basically detach material, make its attack 3,000. Its defense goes to zero. You attack a monster, and it changes to defense, and then it changes its stats back to the way they were. This is also like a really not bad card. Uh, I have no complaints. It's really just it's it's another kind of like card that at one point was quite expensive But now it's just completely power crept, but overall it's not a bad card for our purposes We already have the Shogi Knight, so we don't we didn't need another one But now I think we actually have a place out of Shogi Knight if I'm quite honest with you But yeah two good pulls so far ritual weapon. We don't play rituals Constellar normal summon. Yeah, we don't have the enough Constellars and it's level three So it just doesn't work with our deck. We have a lot of cards that randomly don't you know, we have a lot of like, a lot of different directions of synergy. This card's not terrible. It lets you discard a card and add a spirit monster from your graveyard to your hand. Other spirit monsters just search without having anything. Another cyber gymnast, uh, which is quite decent actually. This is a decent card. It's an earth. It works with that war rock we pulled. It's an earth warrior monster, so it works with the war rock, which is pretty good. And, uh, yeah, it basically it can t discard a card, target to acquisition monster, destroy it. So it's kind of like a Nightmare Cerberus in a certain sense. It can destroy any attack position monster. It's actually, like, it's a decent card. Um, and then we've got, this is not a good card, and Guard Dragon Core Awakening. Uh, this card's not bad, but I don't know what deck I would even use it in. I mean, you can make the argument that I could use it in the... I could use it in the... Actually... Yeah, you can make the argument that I could use this in the normal monster deck. But if you really think about it, right, let's 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 think about this logically for half a second. We dis we have to send an, an effect monster from our hand to the graveyard, special summon one dragon from the deck or, or or deck or graveyard, whatever, whatever, whatever. And does that really actually benefit us at all in the normal monster deck? And I don't know that it does to send a card from our hand to the graveyard because we don't really have any like graveyard triggering effects. If we did, this card would be quite nice, but it's not a bad card actually. We got, these are all like, not all, but like we've pulled some really decent stuff. We have to go update a lot of decks. All right, so let's start off with uh, our main deck. Are we updating anything? Yeah, we're putting in Ouroboros. I don't know what to replace yet. I'm going to think about it momentarily, but I think we put in the Ouroboros. He's basically, we, we, we often get to situations where we get three level four monsters on board and then we can't get to we can't quite get to crusade avermax but we can get to three monsters and this is pretty good it's 2750 and it's got three decent effects so you know it's a ur for a reason and then the diamond diamond crab king is perhaps not good enough to be in this deck because it's basically a 3000 attack rank four which actually isn't bad, but I, want, I don't want to cut down too many links because the links have been putting in work. So I might have to rearrange the deck totally. So I'll, I'll, I'll work a way to get Ouroboros into the deck, but as far as other stuff, I need to figure it out. I think that's the only deck change that we're really making in our main deck. All right, next is Normal Monster Mash. This is a deck that probably will be played in the next episode because it keeps just getting better and better. 
Um, I think that we can do several things. I, this guard dragon card is interesting for sure. And on top of this guard dragon card, we have the right hand shark, which is phenomenal, right? So we've got, um, all right, so we've got crooked cook here, which is kind of crazy, right? So if you look at the combo, we've got buzzsaw shark, we have right hand shark, and then we have crooked cook. So we can set up crooked cook unaffected by everything as long as we draw the right hand shark. I think this is the deck that I'm going to work on for next episode because we haven't touched this deck in a really, really, really long time. And I actually think it's quite good now that we have, now that everything we have, we have Imduct, which gives you an extra normal summon of a, uh, we have the Imduct here, which is actually quite useful for us. And we actually, with the interesting thing with Imduct, we have the Fairy. So we actually have other World Chalice cards I got to look at because uh, they might be useful for us. Actually, I had to just type in World Chalice. There we go, World Chalice. So we have a few World Chalice cards. We have, uh, I don't know if these are usable. I think these are from that the starter deck. But we have Lee, which is completely usable. If this card's normal, somebody can add a World Chalice monster, which is quite good for us. Um, now the problem is you can add a World Chalice monster. You can add another Lee, which is decent. It gives us an extra normal summon. So we might be able to play this Lee, the World Chalice, just a car. It can search itself. We really have to look at this deck because I think there's a lot of things that we can do with this deck. So we might put those in just to think about. I think next episode, like I said, the normal monster mash may be coming back. Uh, this is another car, like I said, the world, the guard dragon thing might be interesting if I can figure out things to play around it. But there's definitely a lot of uh, interesting stuff that we can do with the normal monster mash deck. All right, last but not least, we've got the normal monster mash. We've got another copy of the cyber gymnast. And on top of the cyber gymnast, We've also got other stuff that we can update here. We've got this War Rock, which really works well with the normal Monster Mash deck. So I think that should actually be somewhat usable for us. All right, we just lost a coin flip with a near perfect hand, actually. We have a lot of stuff. Our opponent's going to go into a Lingaribo. Playing, obviously, a Cyber deck with Firewall Defender and all the other Cyber stuff. So they are they're going to cook for a little while. And they're going to activate Deck Lockdown. And Max, I don't even know what's going on right now. They're going to activate Deck Lockdown. Neither player can add cards except by drawing them. That doesn't really stop us. I don't know why they chained Max C in response to that. I don't really know what's going on. They're going to activate Exchange. I mean, they're going to learn <laughs> that our deck is probably not... They're going to take the Fire Barrier Statue and they're going to give us this Math Mech. Which is fine with me. They've already wasted their normal summon, so the Barrier Statue is not doing anything anyway. And they're going to go to end phase. All right, that was an interesting... That was interesting. <laughs> I'll say that. That was extremely interesting. So we've got this, which doesn't really do anything for us. If this card sent to Graveyard, you could target Cybers Monster, double it. That's not, we're not going to let him do that. Uh, so we already know what he's got. And we're just going to activate Penguin Squire. And we're going to special summon Penguin Squire. Now we're going to change the level, yes. Reduce it by one. And we're going to activate this. I don't know what our opponent's playing. Maybe they're a Masochist too. I don't know. Their deck is rather interesting. We can go for Time Thief here. Attack, destroy this. And then he's got Barrier Statue. Or we can go for... We can go for the Ikura. Yeah, honestly, I think the better play is actually not Time Thief. I think the better play is actually the Sioux Ship card. I think it's actually a much better play right now. So we're just going to go into the Sioux ship. Uh, deck Lockdown, I think, is actually not even that bad. Uh, we can actually destroy Deck Lockdown, too, if we want to. So we can attack this. We can destroy Deck Lockdown, and then we can use this. But I don't really need to do that. I'd rather get rid of his monsters. I actually think the Deck Lockdown probably hurts him more than it hurts me anyway. He's going to use Firewall Defender to protect his card. Okay, that sucks. I should have done the other thing. I think we just set this and pass now. And that should uh, wrap it up. Now he can link that away. And he has the one card link. You know what I just realized? The sleeve is still our sleeve because he used exchange. I haven't seen somebody activate exchange against me in a minute. Uh, but he's going to set. I know that's my monster because it's got my sleeve. <laughs> that is so dumb. I mean, they got to fix that. That is rather stupid. Um, they're going to set that monster. We drew Bestial Magnum, which we're going to activate. Uh, but... Yeah, we can't use the effective Bestial Magnumut, but it's fine that we can't use the effective Bestial Magnumut. Uh, we can't use the search effect because of this deck lockdown, but right now, I can't really out that deck lockdown anyway. 
so I, I think it's I think it's fine. So we're gonna activate Bestial Magnemot, we're gonna banish his Lingaribo, and we're gonna summon the Bestial Magnemot. Again, we can't activate the effect because we can't search. Well, I guess this can add from Graveyard too. So if we add a Dragon in Graveyard, it could add. So if we get rid of this, then we can theoretically add. Um, now, what is curious here is what does he have in Graveyard? Nothing, nothing too crazy. If only we could somehow do some battle damage with this Sioux ship, that would be ideal. But right now I can't imagine how we would even do that. So we're just going to go to battle phase. We're going to attack over this. And we're going to attack over this here. It's the fire barrier statue. Uh, we didn't have enough to get rid of it. I wish this was uh, just more attack, but it's not. So now we just go to end phase. Uh, this is not going to resolve, unfortunately, because I think Deck Lockdown prevents it. Uh, but, you know, if we had it in the graveyard, we would have been able to. So if we could have just destroyed that, we would have been able to resolve it. And our opponent's going to destroy the Deck Lockdown second activation. They're going to activate the Cyber Searching card. Discard to search one Cybers. Let's see, can they, can they one card combo... One card full combo into anything. That's the question. I don't know what our opponent's playing. This is very, very interesting. When I saw the Cybers problem, I'm like, here we go. And I thought we were going to have to scoop. But this took a turn for the <laughs> for the best, honestly. Because when I saw the... Uh, I saw I saw Deck Lockdown into Maxi. That was, that was quite something to see. Into Exchange. Like I said, I don't know what he can even really search right now. It's actually... Is there a one-card combo that can get him to, like, an Axis Code Talker or something? I, I don't know. And he's just going to scoop. Okay, lose connection. All right. I, I'm sure it was not the connection. All right, so we've got three Legacy tickets out of that one. Out of curiosity, this is what our opponent was playing. It's a pretty basic Math Mech deck, but he just drew a bunch of stuff that... I guess... If he drew a better hand, he would have actually probably won. But then he's, he's he's got a decent deck, but he's got some garbage cards mixed in. Like Swords of Revealing Light and like Prohibition and this and that. He just drew a lot of really garbage cards. But I mean, it's his fault for putting him in. Like I'm not going to like sit here and like answer these questions for him. But he should have just searched this. And this is basically like a one, like a one card access code talker anyway. Alright, so let's open a Master Pack. Doesn't seem to be anything glowing in it, so we'll see what we've got here. We've got a card underneath. We've got two copies of this. This is an SR. We have two copies of this. That's insane. Uh, a, a four mage, a morphage, gluttony. Uh, this card isn't bad. Uh, neither player can special summon monsters from the extra deck. While well, this card's face up on the field. Uh, if we had a copy of maybe Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres, I would probably play this. Uh, but this card, if this card's Pendulum Summoned or Flip Face Up, neither player can special summon monsters from the extra deck. So maybe this this definitely can go into our extra deck pile because if you Pendulum Summon this out with 1850 defense, it can actually be quite good. So yeah, probably in our Pendulum pile, this card's actually not bad. Uh, next up, we've got... This is a good card for our Dragon deck. Just a really solid card for our Dragon deck. Uh, basically, it lets you target a level 4 lower Dragon in your graveyard, a uh, special summon it or add it back. And we can move things around, so if we had Pisty, we can make some plays there. But it's basically like a recurring spot for Dragons. Uh, Sylvan, Princess, Sprout is not really usable for us. Malefic, we don't have the regular Rainbow Dragon. We don't also don't play a Field Spell. Infernal Sniper is not usable for us. More, more Morphtronic cards. We have so many Morphtronic cards. And Winds over the Ice Barrier, which we don't have enough Ice Barriers to use. So, uh, this is pretty good, but I don't know. This is good for our Pendulum deck, 1 million percent. Uh, like, really, really good. Like, maybe even a win condition in our Pendulum deck. Very good card. Uh, and then, on top of that, we've got the World Legacy Guard Dragon, which is another very good card for our Dragon deck. So, that definitely goes in there. And then, this is a repeat, which is so shocking that we pulled two copies of this. Uh, because we're now pulling doubles of supers, but there are still, like, commons and stuff that we've never even seen. Which, I mean, it makes sense because the, the pool is gigantic on commons. Uh, but overall, there's some decent, there's two usable cards out of this uh, particular batch. Alright, so let's open up these legacy tickets. We've got three legacy tickets. Should be something cool in them. I mean, it's three legacy tickets. It's got to be something good in here, right? Uh, let's see what we've got here. We've got Gem Armadillo, another copy. Uh, and then we've got another Performa Pay, uh, the Perform Mage, Mirror Conductor. We already have this card. Or no, we don't have this card. This switches current attack and defense. Uh, I guess that could come up sometimes. It's a level 4. 
It can uh, target. It's a low. It's a three scale, so it's a low scale. That's good. It can target special summon monster on the field. Its attack and defense become equal to its current attack or defense, whichever is lower. I I don't uh, see why that would be useful, but I guess to out our opponent's monsters, maybe that can be useful, right? If they have like a blue eyes, it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's not really that good. Uh, Cure Mermaid, not really useful. Fish and Swaps. Discard one card, target two banished fish. Add them to hand or Sea Serpents or whatever. So that's not like actually a bad card either. Decent Recursion. Add its two cards back. Uh, we've got, does it, Prokochi's Ass. And then Mech Knight, Avram. It's 2,000 attack and it's a Mech Knight. Does this work in any other sense of anything? I mean, we have that Mech Knight card. Oof. I just thought of a little combo. That's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good. It's probably the best Mech Knight we could have pulled. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We could have pulled, obviously, Blue Sky and all that other stuff. But this card's actually really, really good for us. And uh, because we have the Search spell. not the, We have the Summon from Deck spell for Mech Knight monsters. All right, so this is the uh, Mech, This is our normal Monster Mash deck. I think this goes in the normal Monster Mash deck. It's 2,000 attack light monster. Pretty good. Probably replaces one of these when I eventually, like you know like actually like repair the deck and, and see what needs to be removed i will probably remove more stuff we have this card which is world legacy memory this can actually search the mech knight avram and not even search it can special summon mech knight avram from hand or graveyard or deck not graveyard from hand or deck and uh, unfortunately it does lock you into mech knights but overall this is actually not a bad card um yeah it's not a bad card for sure and then we can get rid of that and then we can look at some of this other stuff that we've got this is good i'm gonna put that in the pendulum deck and this is good i'm gonna put that in the dragon deck all right so this is a pendulum deck we're definitely putting the amorphage gluttony in there definitely good enough to be in the deck all right so this is our dragon deck if you recall uh we can definitely put the gluttony in there Gluttony's pretty good because he's also a dragon but it's actually he's only good if you pendulum summon him out right you have to pendulum summon him specifically yeah, I think, or flipped face up. Pendulum summoned or flipped face up. So we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, but what we can put in the dragon deck for sure is the world world child, world legacy guard dragon. We can definitely put that in there. Because that can basically bring like Komodo dragon back. Uh, that can bring back, I don't know, like the salt wyvern and Brotar and uh, not Tiamaton because he has to be someone with his own effect, but like Rocket Caliber. It can bring back quite a few of these cards. And this is another deck that we have to kind of think about and work on a little bit. There's a lot of cards I think we can remove, and there's a lot of cards I think we can add to this deck. But I think a competitive Dragon deck is definitely something that is playable because uh, we've been pulling good stuff for it. All right, so we just won the coin flip. Our hand is looking fairly solid, really solid. I think we can actually get, nah, I, almost, man, almost, actually, we can get to Crusader Avermax, I think that's the best thing that we can honestly get to right now, just looking at what we've got, I think we can get to Crusader Avermax, so we're going to special summon this card out, actually, no, we can't get to Crusader Avermax, I'm dumb, we're not getting to that, um, we can summon Barrier Statue or, or the, which of the Black Forest, and then we can make a link to, and we can get to almost Crusader Avermax, but we can't quite get there. We can get to Barrier Statue and hope our opponent doesn't have anything for it, and then we just set this. I think we just pass on this. That's probably the best thing we could have done. Because uh, if he had a Fire Monster, great. if he ashed us, we would have gotten to Crusader Avermax because he could have used Hida to... Uh... Yeah, we definitely could have used Hida, but unfortunately we did not get to... What we needed to get to there. Now I don't know where our opponent's playing. If he's playing blue eyes, there's a solid chance that we can, you know, because blue eyes has a lot of high attack monsters. Okay, this is already looking very promising. Blue eyes has a lot of very high attack monsters, so it's possible that we can beat our opponent here. Let's see what we draw. Tiamaton is not usable under the barrier statue, which is a little bit of an inconsistency. This can't attack if we control another monster. This is pretty good. But right now it's not really... You know, we can go into Sioux Ship or the Hida, but right now he doesn't have anything in the graveyard anyway. Uh, this can't attack regardless. So I think we're just going to go Sioux Ship here anyway. We're going to go Sioux Ship. I'm going to move stuff out of the way 
so that if we want to pop the middle column, we can. So now we go to battle phase. I think we, now we go to battle phase. Hopefully he is playing blue eyes and this is a small monster. No, it's 2,000 defense, of course. So that's going to get destroyed, though. That's At least that's good. Um, does that, no, it doesn't get the search. So we're going to go to main phase 2. And we're just going to pass here. He does actually, since he, now we know he's playing this, uh, which is, this is galaxy eyes. They actually do have normal summons that are reasonably large, which is not good for us. He's gonna go to end phase. Phenomenal. Okay, we need to we need to strike quickly here. Sakuratsu armor is perfect right now. Perfect, perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. Uh, we're gonna go to battle phase. Uh, we're gonna attack, and then we're gonna target this one back here. I think because if I target this card, if he chains it, then I have not. Nah, nah, I'm gonna save that for later. So I'm gonna target that one, destroy it, call by the grave. That's fine. I don't think Call by a Grave would have mattered anyway, but that's fine. Uh, now we're going to set this, and we're just going to pass here. We're in a really good situation, but this can be disrupted with one singular Normal Summon plus Harpy's Feather Duster. So, as good of a situation as this is, you know, it, it can it can, it can can be taken from us. We can lose everything we've worked so hard to accomplish in a moment's notice. Uh, he's going to summon Galaxy Wizard. He's going to tribute, you know, use... Oh, I can broken line that. Wow. What can he search that's really good? He can search a monster that he can probably normal summon. So I think the right play is to broken line that. And that's crazy that I get the broken line that. Broken line is so busted. That is crazy. And no one plays around. Who the hell in their right mind plays around broken line? So we're going to negate that. And then this card hasn't been activated yet. Yes! Oh my god. You guys don't even know how big that is because I didn't hype it up before the game. But this is actually the highest rank that we have ever achieved. So I'm going to show you guys right now. We just ranked up. We are in Platinum 3. Now, unfortunately, this is the last day of the challenge. This is the last day of... Uh, not the challenge. This is the last day of the month. So, or the, the, the cycle or whatever you want to call it. So we actually got to Platinum. We actually got to Platinum 3. That's incredible. Uh, this is the highest we have ever, ever achieved. I think it's the highest any masochist has achieved on camera not like you know on on a, in a show i should say there are obviously there are masochists that have reached um diamond but this is the highest that we have achieved and anyone's achieved i believe on 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 a show so now we've got two legacy tickets and i'm not even check out his deck it was probably just galaxy eye so let's go open some packs all right let's open this master pack hopefully we get a beautiful stunning reward for what we just accomplished there it's a huge accomplishment for us that's not an accomplishment worthy card. Neither is the worm. Noble Knight. Is this usable? All right. So this isn't a bad card, but it locks you into Noble Knight. So for that reason, it's not really good. And it looks really cool, right? That line back there. Mimi Cat's not a bad card. Uh, Photon Lizard. I don't think Photons even use this card. Yeah, it's two Photon. I don't think even they would be dumb enough to use it. Uh, Mimi Cat. You need like a bunch of stuff like Toon World. Death Wombat prevents damage. Not really usable for us. Virtual World. Lily. I don't think this is really usable for us because we don't have the supporting cards. Brandon in red is a great card. Don't have any of the supporting details for it. Uh, but, yeah, not, not really usable for us quite yet. All right, let's open up these legacy tickets. Hopefully there's something really nice in here. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta hopefully get something good. Not really usable for us. Uh, another Noble Knight. Ah, uh, this card's kind of a, not that great. Uh, not for us, anyway. I mean, it's, it's a special summon if we have a Light Warrior, but I'm not getting rid of a Light Warrior to summon a Dark Level 5. I don't see how that's useful. Okay, so this card's actually not that terrible, but it's basically a Battle Trap that, on top of the ba being a Battle Trap, requires us to discard, which is worse than a regular Battle Trap. And then we've got, this is Lycanthrope. Lycanthrope's... Uh, Ritual spell. I think we pulled Lycanthrope. I don't remember, but it's this is basically a ritual monster that is like a werewolf. I don't think that that's really usable for us. All right, well, I just won the coin flip. Like I said, this is the first match of uh, this is our first match in Platinum Three, actually. So we'll see how it goes because we have to be a villain all episode today. But I mean, it's worked for us, right? We can't get angry. Broken line right there. There can only be one. Memories of an ad. I mean, look at this. This is like so many purple cards. You know it's bad. Uh, but we've. this has been like a total villain arc for us. And this is what we have to do. We have no choice. Uh, I wish that, you know, we, we just haven't been pulling the stuff that we really need to. So we've turned uh, into these dastardly people. 
but I think it's I think it's fine though. We have a, a decent hand, very decent hand actually. I can't even really complain. The game gives me two things. It's giving it gives me pendulum cards and it gives me uh, and it gives me the floodgates. Those are the two things that this game loves to give me. So we're gonna go ahead and, and just do what we got to do with what we have. Nothing else I can really do. We didn't activate anything. Tin tinfoil goldfish um, is pretty decent. So we're gonna normal summon that. Uh, he's got an activatable card, which is a little scary. Uh, I can attack and then attack directly, but I mean, I guess that's the smarter play. But if he's got a mirror force or something, then we got to play around. I'd rather have Time Thief. Just have a little more security because I like Time Thief because he can weasel his way out of things. Because if they have like some sort of battle trap that activates on declaration or like some other card, we can we can move him out of the way and then use him later so that's good but if it's an imperm then it's just yeah, whatever so we're going to attack over what he has face down and he had a malefic okay malefics we're playing malefics how did this yeah i'm not even gonna ask i was gonna say how did this deck make it to platinum three but not only is it malefics what is this dude playing malefics and destiny board so he's going to be able to activate a destiny board card we have five turns we don't have any back removal really so we literally have five turns here we have to make this happen otherwise we lose because we don't have any back removal in this deck for the most part actually if we get a trap off the top of his deck we can just put f on the top of his deck and if we do that then we win the duel so as long as we can do that we can probably win i can negate my own card wow what in the world just happened what in the world just happened is there something a ruling i don't understand here and he loses wow so i activated the effect to take his card and he just went to the graveyard what was the what was the deal with that ruling anybody know that it just went to the graveyard what was that about that was very odd that was very was there something on the field that like i, I maybe i didn't read I, I don't even know what's going on there what just happened up oh, first win of this so we've got a million copies of this now and we've got a legacy ticket all right also let's check our opponent's deck they were playing a, a dark sanctuary you know like finl like a final deck the destiny board deck yeah i don't understand what just happened yeah i i really don't i just read this card again i have no idea why in the world our card the card just went to the graveyard instead of going underneath our time thief redoer but this is an interesting deck. Uh, he didn't manage to set any of that up, and we sent this card to the graveyard, which is kind of cool. Also, on a side note, look how many games we've won. This is actually kind of incredible. We lost, and then we won five in a row with a Masochist deck in Platinum. That's saying a lot. Five wins in a row is pretty crazy. All right, let's open the last pack of the episode. Hopefully, we get something good on this exit, uh, because I don't think we're getting much higher than this today got an assault card we already have we can't use that that's decent card but i don't have a uh, rank 8 9 10 to really do anything with this uh we have that already block golem is not a good card if i remember spellbook of power is not bad but we can't really use it rainbow refraction is not really that usable for us this constellar is not really usable and uh, dustin card so we have essentially eight unusable cards here none of these are really usable for us all right, so here's our legacy ticket. This is the last pack of the episode. Hopefully we pull something because it is the final, final, final pack of the episode. So hopefully there's something usable under here. Sonic Duck's not bad. It's level three with great stats. And then we've got Damage Diet. All right, so this card's not like terrible. It basically halves all the damage you take and then you can banish it and have all the damage you take. Not once per turn. Um, but you can't actually you can't do it twice with the same effect so two turns in a row you can have the damage that you're going to take okay that's fine uh so that's the end of the episode i might be able to play that normal monster deck i don't really like to make too many changes mid episode but no, next duel i might make the normal monster deck uh because we have imduct we have link spider we have a lot of stuff for that normal monster deck that may be quite good i actually let me just go pop over there and just look at it why am i talking about it without looking at it also we pulled the exact shark that we needed which is it like an auto win in a lot of situations so we'll take a look here yeah like i said that shark is an auto win 
against a lot of decks because now no one's playing kaiju's right because pearly's not in the meta but if you summon buzzsaw shark you can special summon right hand shark and then you just make like i said crooked cook and as long as this is on the field and there's no other cards on the field it's unaffected so our opponent will essentially lose because most people don't have an out to this i mean i guess you have underworld goddess in certain decks but in a lot of situations this card is basically an auto win so as long as they don't especially in the ranks that we're playing like if i'm playing against like a dark magician deck or a blue eyes deck they're not playing underworld goddess they're not smart enough to run that kaiju stuff like that so more than likely in a lot of situations this card is actually legitimately an auto which kind of, it's unaffected again can't be destroyed by battle kind of crazy and then uh, obviously can still attack and stuff and do damage which is cool but yeah, I think I, I think this might be the the deck next uh, next episode. So we'll we'll look at it. Also, we have some other stuff like descent and a lot of new cards that we've gotten, like the magic key world and and the danger zone. We've gotten a lot of cards that that might be able to be usable for us next next episode. So thank you for watching. And have a great day. La, 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 la.